Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Motive, Social Motivation for the Creative Class. I'm your host, Tim Fulton, here with our featured creative, Steve Anderson. <laughs> Independent filmmaker, author, father, former slash future computer programmer. Yes, all those. Uh, recently published a uh, compendium, 13 short stories in the book 1975. 1979. 1979. Short story collection available on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, and Lost Week in Records. <laughs> Good. And available right outside and, here. Exactly. Uh, and in the trunk of my car. Yeah. You got it, just like mixtapes in mm. the old days. That's right. Uh, Steve, what's your background? What uh, brings you to Columbus? Um, what brings me to Columbus is Route 23. Uh, <laughs> just early in, <laughs> early in the 80s, I load up the car and uh, came to OSU and uh, studied in um, computer science and uh, got a job and went, went to it from there. And you, and you decided to stay. You still have certainly roots back home, right? Yes. Where are you little, from? Uh, Bainbridge. It's back down 23 and turn right down Route 50, another 20 miles. And it's up this beautiful valley called Paint Valley, a little small town called Bainbridge. That's kind of, uh, when, growing up there, it was like ringed with about 10 sawmills. And uh, so the logging community was very big down there. In Columbus, you got involved in bands. Uh, you started while you were doing computer programming for some larger corporations. Yep, the man. The man. <laughs> uh, you did some independent filmmaking yes. and sort of, uh, as, as we talked about, you sort of culled together uh, the friends and family that you knew in order to get that done, but with no formal training. Correct. Yeah, when I, when I first came to Columbus I, uh, and started OSU, I, I landed a part-time job at the old High Lai restaurant. I don't know if anybody remembers that, uh, Park and Cars. And um, that was back when OSU still had its film school. And I happened to work with a guy named Bugsy, who was a film school student. And um, we'd hang out, and, uh, but he would, he would share, you know, he had a great passion for him. And he, and he would share these, you know, his, his film school experience with me. And, and, and I would, you know, became friends with him, and I got to help him on set some. And, uh, but he, I remember t one time he was telling me about this uh, Eastern European professor he had, and, and he said the guy was just kind of insane. You know, he he would he would go into these long diatribes, and and and, and he would talk about um, um, the Three Stooges films. Actually, the the, the director was uh, Del Lloyd, I believe, and he would say uh, if you look at those films and you would study them, they're um, there's no fluff. Every scene is meaningful. And that's why, you know, 80 years later, they're, they're, they're still funny, you know. And he said, you know, the, the guy in that thick accent, he'd be like, see that? See his head right there? You need to become the toilet bowl, you know. And, and, uh, and I thought that was great. And, and I, so I took that, you know, as one of the tools in, in trying to, you know, to learn it. And whether it's writing or, you know, writing scripts or film, like, everything has to mean something. There's no fluff. You, know, you could stop the film or stop the book anywhere, and it's a, you know, it's a beautiful scene, you know? Well, and it's a concise piece, right? Yeah. Whether you know what happened before it or, whether, or what happened after it. Right. So you were inspired to do that, um, but you had no formal training. You didn't sort of drop out of the program that you were in. Uh, you had to learn it yourself. Right, yeah. I... I I don't know. I just I didn't want to become a starving artist right yet, so I you know. Was uh, that the motivation truly? <laughs> was that um, it? Like you you got into computer science because you. Well, I like immediate gratification, and with with the computer sciences, you can get that. And um, but with film, or you know, working with film or the the creative outlet, um, yeah, there's there's just there's just much more of a pull. I I don't I don't know. I can't explain it. I I just. I get restless, and um, I just need to create something. Whether it's you know writing music or or um, you know writing scripts or writing you know stories and stuff, I, I just need to create. I have to. So I I think what's interesting about you and what you've talked about is from from music to film uh, to the book, you you come into it an amateur, and while you are receiving some compensation for it, at least the book. 
or at least making up the cost <laughs> for doing it. I got my gas down here. So. Yes, they got you gas to be here today. Uh, you sort of, you make an attempt, uh, and then you reach out and hone it, or w at least with the filmmaking, you had to study up with books and study up with how, you know, how to shoot things, what's the equipment, what's the narrative. Yeah. Can you I talk a little bit, either film or writing, sort of what the process was from the get-go? Well, yeah, that, that's, they kind of like lend to themselves, and, and writing this book is just a culmination of everything I've done so far, but a little bit, I don't want to say harder, but just different. In, uh, with the film, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I just don't have patience, I guess, going the tr traditional route, and it's either from, um, I don't know, being either too stupid to know I shouldn't or being too cocky to know that I could, so I would, um, you know, I, I in, in, you know, in, when I was going to OSU, I, you know, I, I bought a Super 8 camera, you know, and I'm like getting with my buddies and making little shorts, and as I progressed, you know, and I, and I wanted to, to make it better, you know, I wanted, I, I didn't want to be lame, you know, people are, have busy lives, they don't want to like be watching something that's lame, you know, so, <laughs> right, so, um, you know, I, I, I studied film, you know, I, I would, you know, just like what you hear the big dog say, you know, you, it's actually studying film, you're, you know, you look at those clips and you're just like, well, you know, if, if, it's, if it's action, you know, you want the, the character to be big, you, you need to like shoot up, or if you want him to be ugly and scary, you do a close up or, or shoot down if you want him to make look vulnerable. And, um, and you, or, or, or if the pacing, you know, is like, you know, some clips are like, uh, or like three seconds to go boom, boom, or, or longer. It, it, that's all, it, you know, when film is made, it, it's not all accident or just like, no, nah, let's just try this. No, everything has a meaning. There, it, everything is like precise and there's, and there's a pacing, there's a beat. And, and when I would edit and also in, in writing the books, I, I would get my camera and, I, and when I, you know, I get on my scooter and I'm riding around town and I'm like, wow, look at that, you know, and I, at, and I would find a scene or it was usually um, like some gritty post-apocalyptic looking landscape and I would, man, that would be awesome to shoot something there and I would write a scene about it and it would, it would just expand from there. And, but, <laughs> but with books, um, you don't have the, the luxury of having, uh, you know, the background and the, the, the soundtrack. And well, the scene is written for you in right, film, right? Yeah, you, in the book, you have, to, you have to create that with your words, the imagery you want the reader to have, and you have to create that pace. So, so as you were setting out to, as a, as a side note, you ended up getting uh, laid off from your job and so had the ability to sort of take this time and sit down and say, what's my next project? in a good way, right? Uh, and also <laughs> had the good fortune of having an English major living in your house. Yeah, that helped. <laughs> God bless her. Yep. Uh, and so you set out and you wrote, you wrote a couple of those stories and you handed them over. Yeah. And then what? Yeah, well, I was actually in the process of starting another film and, um, and that, you know, it's trying to get punk rockers is like trying to herd cats, so it kind of didn't happen. But, you know, I, I, I still had to do something, you know. So I, this friend shared this story with me, and it was such a, I don't know, a sweet, great story. And, I, and I'm like, man, it's... And, and she'd never told anybody this story before, and I don't know if that's being a douche that I just wrote a story for everybody to read about it, but <laughs> she said it was okay. So, But anyway, it's, the idea was her story, and I wrote it, but I embellished it and made it my own and blah, blah, blah. The collection... Uh, that I've written is this coming this collection of coming of age stories growing up, and I think it's um, what drew me to it. And when I wrote this story, is um, I don't know. Everybody experiences this, you know, when you're well. Everybody when you when you there's that time in your life at that age when you're when everybody is like the closest to their animal heritage, you know, with their with their sex and their violence, you know, and and it's true, and um, Every everybody, when you're you know going through that coming of age period, you're you're um, you're, you're experiencing these life molding things for the first time, and uh, y your emotions are raw, you know, and and uh, and you haven't failed big yet. So you know everybody's kind of equal, 
and um, the innocence is real. So the, the drama in that time period of people's lives is, I think, in, I don't know, compelling to me. And I, well, I there's, a re- there's a reason why you wrote the book, and there's a reason why so many uh, sort of narratives are written about that time. Yeah. And I, regarding your friend who, who you heard the story and then wrote the story again, uh, and obviously you framed it, but I, I think uh, great artists steal. Yeah. And that there and is... A <laughs> beg and borrow. Sort of, well, you beg, you borrow, you steal, and you put your work into it. You know, that person who told the story didn't write it. You know, yeah. And while it may be a true story and something that happened to them, I think there's a debate, debate to be had uh, about that stealing. Yeah. So once uh, you've got 13 stories, you have uh, run it through your wife. You have uh, hired a, a content editor. You have hired yes. a copy editor. Right. You learn, you know, that there are all these things that you need to do. Do you not have a problem looking at your own work? Do I have a problem looking at my own work? Yeah. Um, no, I, I don't. I love my own work. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, I, I am a big fan of my own voice. Uh, I have a very difficult time. Uh, I will not watch this interview again. You, you won't? No. Uh, Benji will edit it, and I will make sure the levels seem good, and as he, he will flip through all three camera angles, uh-huh. and I will never watch it again, because I don't want to watch myself do it. And I have, a, I have the same problem with, with audio I record, or frankly, my writing. Is that simply not a problem you have? Well, it, yes and no. It, I am okay with just the, you don't have to give a long answer because I have a follow-up. Okay. Is it yes or no? Do you have? <laughs> it's, it's a shorty, shorty sure. question. Okay. It, I don't like reading it when it's not, when it hasn't become that familiar album to me yet. When, it, when I'm reading it and I hit a spot and I'm like, oh shit, what do I do? Because that doesn't feel right. Or, you know, but once I get past that and it, and it feels all good all the way through me, I mean, the second story in the, in the book called Motel Pool, I love the ending, and I even wrote it, you know? And uh, so... You wrote the whole thing. I wrote the whole thing, but the ending's awesome, man. I so just, my follow-up is how do you have the wisdom to know to have your wife, to have professional editors look at it as well and not just think, well, this is really fucking good. Yeah. I'm done. Put it in the book. Let's do. Yeah. Let's do it. Well, when my wife tells me that you need to fix that, so <laughs> she, that's the shortcut. That's the short answer. That's, that's the testament for it. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you got to be, I don't know, you got to be, um, cri- criticism is a gift, you know? So when somebody tells you something, because it, it kind of takes balls to like say, hey, your shit's messed up, man. So if they do that, listen, you know? So I think it takes balls to say, look at my shit. <laughs> Well, I kind of knew that. Well, I, don't know, I knew that kind of going in. I was going to be getting that. But, you know, I, I really wanted to do this. And I was willing to, you know, get banged around a little bit to get there. So I think that, frankly, your, your need to create and your ability to say, here is my shit is a gift. Um, what, uh, what keeps you in Columbus? Um, what keeps me in Columbus is, uh, I don't know, I just like that... Uh, I, I just love this town. There's, there's, there's a lot of like-minded people here that um, <laughs> embrace stupid things, you know, and, and in a good way, you know. It's like, and they're, they're, they're willing to, uh, to try things, you know. It, I just love that. I just <laughs> At some point, we will talk about the rope bridge in your backyard, the pirate <laughs> radio station that you started yeah. on the block where I grew up. Yeah. Uh, but for now... For now. Steve Anderson, thank you so much for your time. You.